Today we are talking about the Sig Sauer Romeo 9T. Now full disclosure, Sig sent us this optic a few months ago with the intention of us testing it, giving feedback, uh, with our intent to possibly sell this optic or at least make a video about it because of uh, the nature of this optic and its price point and kind of the key features. The guy from SIG that sent me this optic, him and I have had conversations regarding feedback on optics before, so he has reached out to me. We've had phone calls um, about the 4T, 4XT Pro and then some other stuff going on. So there is, a, there is a relationship between him and I regarding optics specifically at SIG. So just keep that in mind as uh, we go th through this video. The way we test things here at T-Rex is not exactly scientific. We're not doing environmental testing. We're not doing durability testing, especially on optics like SIG or Aimpoint or EOSec. Optics that kind of have a reputation for durability and uh, stuff like that because we don't have the laboratories to support anything like that. But the way we do test things is in, with the end user in mind. So we're going to run this guy like we do our favorite optics. We're going to shoot drills with it. We're going to be outside in the rain and the heat, whatever the case may be. And we'll be able to formulate an opinion on a comparison basis to our favorite optic. So uh, that brings a lot of value to the end user because, you know, if this optic can survive in 180 degrees temperature, doesn't really mean much to me. But uh, being able to zero well and not have any emitter reflection is important to me. So that's kind of the opinion we're going to go through uh, with this guy. And we're also going to talk about the key features, what comes in the box, and then some other stuff uh, regarding the price and whatnot. So SIG optics generally have some of the best packaging. And what I mean by best packaging is that it comes with a lot of accessories that most optics don't come with. So that's a super nice thing to have. This is the case with their 8T, um, their 4XT, the 4T Pro, and you know their uh, Tango 6T. They, they come with a lot of things in the box. So in the case of this optic, you're getting lens covers, which we have mounted here on the optic. Um, lens covers, are they really necessary for red dots? Uh, not so much, especially the rear cover. They are, you know, they're obviously nice to protect the glass, but this is a, a tank of an optic uh, with the glass recess quite a bit. So, uh, but one nice thing about lens covers is, especially on red dots, is you can occlude the front optic, the front lens, which is great for training for obvious reasons. Uh, but also, if your battery starts to die in this optic, or you're running the onboard battery because your battery is missing or completely dead, uh, your emitter gets a little dimmer, and if you occlude the front lens. Um, that it makes the optic appear to be a little bit brighter when, uh, like I said, the battery's dying. So you get your lens covers, which is very nice. You also get a, an ARD, so a kill flash for it, if you're into that sort of thing. You'll get a battery, obviously, and then you'll get uh, the tools that you need to mount the optic and take off the strut if you need to. Um, so everything you need to work on the optic and install it is there. And then lastly, you'll get a lens pin to clean the optic. So. What comes in the box is very nice. It's definitely everything you'd expect for an optic that costs as much as this thing does. The way we specifically tested this was really centered around the dual reticle system going on in this optic. So if you're unfamiliar with Romeo 9T, the main feature of this optic that makes it unique as of the making of this video is it is the only optic that has two independent reticles. So you have an EOTech style red reticle with a one or two MOA center dot, 65, 68 MOA ring around it, and you have a two or three MOA green dot. Now these, op these reticles can be turned on independently of each other, so you can have just your green dot, just your red, or they can be on at the same time, so you can have both reticles on at the same time. And also you can turn off the uh, 65, 68 MOA ring from the red reticle if you want, so you can just have a green and a red dot going on. We tested this optic around that, so we set it up on this 300 blackout here uh, with one of the reticles zeroed for supers, one of them zeroed for subs. We set it up on a 16 inch MCX with one reticle zeroed for 77 grain, Mark 262, and then the other one zeroed for 55 grain Winchester white box, just range training ammo. And then we also set it up on a Mark 18 uh, zero, with one reticle zeroed for suppressed shooting and the other zeroed for unsuppressed shooting. Now with that being said, some people think that you can just you know, zero your gun for the subs that you're using for home defense and just know your hold for your supers or zero your your long precision DMR recce gun for your 77 grain and then just go to the range and know your hold for your 55 grain or zero your gun suppressed and then just know your hold for your hold for unsuppressed. And uh, what we kind of found through the testing and just having two independently zero reticles is that's not exactly how things work. So what we have here, is we have the zero from the 16 inch MCX. So we have Mark 262 fired at 100 meters with a bipod and a bag, you guys saw it in some of the content in this video. And uh, this is the group we got. So this is about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. So pretty good group for what that gun is. And what I did next is I shot using the same reticle, so not using the dual reticle system here. I shot uh, 55 grain from the same position, same distance, and this was what I got. So as you can see, there's not only a difference slightly in elevation, but dramatically in windage. And this is kind of the trend we saw across 
all the different zeros, whether it was supers and subs on 300 blackout, 77, 55 grain, 556, and then suppressed, unsuppressed. So some people think that you can just zero your gun for the ammo you want for home defense or for precision or whatever, and then have that training ammo on the side and just know your hold. Um, across all of these, we notice that's not exactly the case. And that just brings a lot of validity to this optic because you can't just know your hold sometimes because sometimes it'll be just way in a random direction you're not expecting. For example, this gun, these subs were a couple inches down and a lot of inches to the right. And that's just something you wouldn't expect. It's just, you know, the nature of things. So uh, that brings a lot of validity to having two reticles, especially when you have a limited number of guns and you have, you know, your home defense gun, but you don't want to go out and train with it. And you don't want to use your home defense ammo. Um, having two reticles is definitely applicable to that sort of thing. Another thing that we evaluated this optic with is its glass clarity. So SIG optics uh, that we've experienced have had tremendously clear glass, like EOTech clear glass, especially if we're shooting under nods. And we compare this directly to the EOTech. In that regard, we think the EOTech is the king of passive night vision shooting. And this optic, along with the 8T and the 4T and the 4XT Pro, um, is very, very close, if not just as good as the EOTech. So if you're looking for an optic that is um, for passive night vision shooting, this is definitely a contender. I would definitely recommend it. Now on the topic of glass clarity with SIGs is they generally have a tent during the day and they do some voodoo magic to get it to remove, be removed during night vision shooting. Uh, but this optic is no exception there. Now with this optic having a red and a green emitter, when light reflects off of that emitter, red and green kind of makes a purplish tint. And uh, that's kind of what you see when looking through this optic. Now, uh, you really only notice it during the, when you're inside and if you're outside, um, with bright sunlight and that sort of thing, uh, you're not gonna notice that tint too much. And uh, I wouldn't even complain about it, but it's just something to note. You are, if you buy this, you are spending a tremendous amount of money. So you, it'd be nice to know that if you, your optic has a little bit of a tint. With this optic having two reticles and you know being daytime bright, uh, truly daytime bright, like burn your retina out bright with both reticles, uh, what's the battery life? Well, the battery life with both reticles on max brightness, don't really know. That's something we didn't test. Um, but what they do advertise is 50,000 hours of battery life. So that is, you know, Standard across the board with LED uh, emitter optics like T2s and whatnot. It's a little less than some, but uh, just know that this has this has a good battery life. It's not like 14,000 hours or anything where you have to change it um, multiple times in a year. Another key feature about battery life with this optic is it actually doesn't need a battery to function. So um, if your battery dies, if you just don't have a battery in at all, there's an onboard battery within the optic that is kind of that is a backup that will keep the power, the optic on for a limited number of time, um, just in a dimmer setting. So. That's a nice feature to have. You really don't need iron sights with, with this optic, especially with how durable it is. We'll talk about durability in a second, but um, say your optic dies and then you go to throw your one, two, three, and that's been in your pistol grip for three years in the optic and that thing happens to be dead. You're still gonna have an optic that works for at least the rest of the day. Considering the durability on this optic, yes, it is very durable. Now, like I said, we don't have laboratories or means of testing the durability outside of what SIG can already do. Uh, but you can just tell by the way this optics look, the way it's built, it's additional shroud and everything that this thing is extremely durable. Now this thing is big. It's definitely overbuilt. This thing weighs 13.7 ounces without lens covers or anything. So uh, yes, this is a this is a hunk of an optic. And uh, just like the AT, it's, it's very overbuilt. So durability is, should definitely not be on your list of concerns if you're buying um, one of these optics or really any of the good SIG optics. The last thing to talk about is the price of this optic. So as of the making of this video, this isn't a very, very expensive optic. It is $3,900. Uh, yes, I said that correctly. It is $3,900 for a red dot without magnification. Now, why is it so expensive? It's this expensive because of some of the features we mentioned, you know, the onboard battery, dual reticles, and the fact that it's almost made completely in the United States. Um, there's a lot of manufacturing going on that I don't understand um, to make it so expensive. Now, is this optic worth that much money? Now, considering the main feature of this optic having dual reticles, that's gonna be your biggest selling point to making it worth that much money. You know, we gave examples of how we used it with different uh, weight of ammo for 5.56, subs and supers with 300 blackout, suppressed, unsuppressed, that sort of thing. So if you really think this optic or you need that feature, this optic is currently the only option you have. Now let's look at some other things that cost roughly this, this amount and then maybe that'll help you determine if this optic's really worth the money. So, speaking on the dual reticle system, you can do something quite like this. Now, this is a T2 and a Comp M5. This is kind of a more expensive example of, of you know, emulating a dual reticle system. This is gonna be, you know, including tax and all of that, if you pay retail and mounts, it's gonna be between $23, $2,500. Now, if you think about, think about that for a second, you can get two aimpoint red dots, 
and still have enough money to buy a Steiner laser for the same price as the Romeo 9T. Now, what would be an even better way to do this is to get two hollow suns, one of which is just a green dot, and then another of which has their multiple reticle uh, system that is red. So you can literally emulate exactly what this 9T does for five, 600 bucks maybe, maybe even less. Um, now, what does parallax look like and glass clarity and all that sort of thing? Well, hollow sun glass and any point glass is very clear, so don't have to worry about glass clarity, but parallax, who knows? Uh, that, that'll take, take some testing, but uh, it's just something to note, you know, $600 for two hollow suns and you get the dual reticle system that the SIG has. Just something to think about. Another thing you can do is kit out an entire rifle. So uh, this is a BCM Mark II upper on an arrow lower. We got a Geisley trigger, uh, radiant charging handle, D-ball D2, Surefire dual fuel turbo, T2 on a Scalaworks mount, a sling. Um, this gun is gonna cost a couple hundred dollars more than the, the 9T. So you can almost have a fully kitted gun for the same price as the 19. Now obviously you can save some money on your light and your optic. You can save money in a lot of places on this gun. This is a pretty high-end setup. This is, you know, it's not top tier or anything, but uh, this is a very good setup and it's gonna cost you, you know, around 41, 4,200 bucks. So just another consideration when thinking about spending $4,000 on a red dot. Now the last thing I wanna compare the price of the 19 to is this. Not the whole gun, but this optic. So this is a seven to 35 Night Force Attacker. This is premier high-end, high-power variable optic glass that costs less than the 9T. This is $3,600. You can generally find these a little bit cheaper depending on where you look, but that's just something to really think about. You know, this is a red dot. Um, it's a red dot. This is a high-power premier glass optic that's issued to the military um, that costs less than it. So those are just some things that came to mind when I was thinking about the price of this thing and is could I justify the price? And I was thinking, you know, I could buy a Night Force Attacker 7 to 35. I can buy... I can build a whole nother gun, essentially, fully kitted out. So just things to consider. The final question to answer is, should you buy this optic? Here at T-Rex, we are not selling it because our final recommendation is no, you should not buy it. Now that, that's not to say there's anything wrong with this optic. This optic performs very well. The only negative I would say about this optic and this performance is that purplish tint. But like I said, when you're shooting it, especially outside, you don't even notice it. I wouldn't even consider it a complaint, but if you're spending that much money on this optic, it's something I would want to know about before I paid for it. Um, but like I said, this is a very, very good optic. It does everything really, really well. It tracked well, parallax is good, all that stuff. But it's $3,900. That is really, really hard to stomach for a red dot. This is definitely marketed for a very, very specific audience. Um, you know, SIG will say it's super high speed special operators. Um, so with that being said, that makes me even want to recommend it even less because I like companies that are targeting you guys, the civilian defense industry with their products, whether it's a gun, an optic, whatever the case may be. So that's our final recommendation on it. I would say go out and get a good red dot, like a SIG Romeo 4XT Pro or 4T, Aimpoint T2, EOTech, and use the rest of the money that you could have spent on this with ammo and train. So until next time, Brandon at T-Rex.